Hello all, in this video we'll be covering two-point perspective by drawing a cityscape. Here's a visual of uh, two vanishing points and how a cube differs uh, when it's above the horizon line, at the horizon line, and below. Notice how the corner of the cube is what's closest to you. In two-point perspective, we use the corner as the, the detail for the drawings. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a cityscape. I'm going to create a horizon line on the upper third of my paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a vanishing point on the extreme left and the extreme right of the paper for this exercise. We'll label those vanishing points uh, just for you. And again, we have two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create two intersecting roads. So I'm going to put two guidelines that go back to the vanishing point on the right that glide over to the left and the same mirroring on the right and left. That way we have these two intersections of roads created. What I'm going to do then, in where they intersect, just above, I'm going to place uh, about a one inch line below my horizon line that's vertical. That's going to be the corner of a box I create, which will become a building. I'll then take the top and the bottom of the line and draw that back with a light convergence line that goes back to the vanishing point on either side. Let me just clean that up right there. Try that again. Again, I want to hit the vanishing point against the bottom and top of my vertical line I created. I'll then guess the width I want to the left of my first line. Um, that'll make the width of the building on one side, and then I can do it on the other. Again, keeping vertical lines. I'm now going to strengthen those to show you my two sides. To get the rooftop, I'll take the leftmost side and bring that to the right vanishing point, and the rightmost side, bring that to the uh, other vanishing point. Where they intersect creates the intersection point of the top of the cube. I'll just further enhance this with a sharpie to indicate the three-dimensional cube or box we created. As we move forward, we'll no you're going to notice how it will start to look like a building. Feel free to erase lines as you go to just get a little bit more of a visual of what you're creating. As I move forward now, I'm going to create more buildings of various heights. So again, I'll always follow the rule where when I draw a vertical line, I'm going to use convergence lines from the top and bottom of the line and bring them back to both vanishing points. And then I'll estimate how wide I want each side of my buildings and I'll place vertical lines. I can stack these buildings right next to each other, create separations, what have you. So I'll be creating buildings to the left of my original one and then to the right. Again, drawing a vertical line, bringing the top edge back to the left and to the right, creating the width of my edges. And remember, as I overlap, I don't have to completely draw my boxes or cubes out. Uh, I'll move forward quickly here and just use some Sharpie to enhance the outlines. I'll now work on the left hand side and do the same thing I did on the right. Just continuing to create buildings upon buildings. Have, have some fun with variation like I am here. And again, just using Sharpie so it stands out in the video. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to place an additional building here. I'm going to draw a large building up close that's across the street from that group of buildings. I'll also enhance some sidewalks and have some fun with my intersections where I'm going to create a curved sidewalk at the intersection and also place crosswalk bringing those lines back to each vanishing point will make it feel like a crosswalk I can play with the width of my sidewalks 
And then if I estimate the distance of my concrete slabs in a second, I can create those sections we see on sidewalks and bring them back to the vanishing points that are appropriate. So anything that's flaring out to the left goes to the right vanishing point, and anything that's flaring out to the right goes back to the left vanishing point. So again, I put these guide marks to help me know some spacing. As things get closer, spacing gets wider. As things go further away, spacing gets tighter. I can control both areas of the sidewalk at the same time as well. Hopefully that gives you a clear picture. I'm going to put a little fence on this side of the street. So I'll put one of my fence posts and I can guide a line out. Put a little cross hatching there. Shoot the lines back on one side and shoot them across. Always using the vanishing points for whatever I need. I'll put some additional buildings in the distance. I'm going to create a doorway on this building by starting with a box. I'll do a little bump in to create a recessed door, a door set inside the building lines with some additional details. I'll also add uh, a two floor layout with some windows. Uh, horizontal type lines always need to go back to the vanishing point. Uh, vertical lines never do uh, in two point perspective. These are just some uh, fun estimations you can create to like create window widths and also architectural textures and details. Uh, right here, I'm going to put a street a street light by putting a vertical pole, and then the angle of the post going across, and then I'm going to place the light mechanism there. If I want to create another one, I can guide the top and bottom of the post back to the right vanishing point and create a smaller version of it across the street. I'm going to put a trash can here just for some added details. And then we'll talk about light source in a little bit as well. I'm going to enhance uh, and draw in some doorways and windows on a couple buildings here just to show the nuances of doing the work, just like I did in the closer building. Bringing that side of the building back to the left vanishing point. And then if I want to do anything on the right side of buildings, I bring it back to the right vanishing point. So constantly switching between vanishing points. The right side of a building, again, back to the right vanishing point. The left side, back to the left vanishing point. I'm going to do some shading on the right side of these buildings, because I'm going to create a light source coming in from the left. I'll show you how to do some enhancements with light source as well. About cast shadows and, and that. I'm going to put a little sun up here. If the sun is directing light, uh, rays back there, you can actually use the sun as another vanishing point to shoot angles of where shadow uh, would go in terms of angle. So I'm using, again, the sun against the edges of... Uh, uh, the building on one side of the street and one on the other. And that will help describe the sense of light movement as well. There's always more details you can put in um, as you go. But I hope this was helpful.